What is up, I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Today we're going to be checking out the Sennheiser HD 598SE. That is special edition, open back headphones. Little fun fact, Sennheiser actually credits themselves as having invented the open back headphone design back in 1968. I've got nothing to discredit that, so let's see if that pedigree shows and holds up with this new iteration of a pretty well regarded headphone, the HD 598. So the MSRP for these headphones is $250, but you'll be able to get it for quite a bit lower than that. I was able to see them on Amazon for around $130 right before recording this video. That's actually cheaper than the original version of the headphones, which I think were around $150 for whatever reason. The headphones are pretty much the exact same internally. The only differences are in the color and some of the accents and stuff like that. When I picked these up four months ago, I was actually able to find them for an incredible deal of around $100. I think they were like $99. And so that was a must buy for me. So Sennheiser is well known for producing some great sounding and high quality audio gear from low price up to thousands of dollars. At CES, I was actually able to try out a pair of like $55,000 headphones that they make. At this price point for between $100 and $200, this is really aimed at the kind of entry level audiophile person. Somebody who's willing to spend a little bit more money than, you know, like your typical $50 headphones to get better sound quality, but not really, you know, in there jumping in to spend, you know, $2,000 on headphones yet. So taking a look at what you get inside of the box, there's of course the headphones. We've got two interchangeable copper cables in here. One is a three meter that is terminated in a 6.3 millimeter straight plug. The other is 1.2 meters and it's terminated in a 3.5 millimeter straight plug. Also included is a 6.3 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter adapter so that you can use the longer cable with sources like mobile devices, which typically only come with 3.5 millimeter outputs. The interchangeable cable utilize a nice little locking mechanism to make sure they don't pull out too easily and it is worth noting that the original 598s do not come with the additional 1.2 meter cable so if you're looking to use this kind of around the house maybe with your tablet or some other mobile device while walking around that might be a differentiating factor for you so in terms of aesthetics the SEs come exclusively in this solid black color that was kind of the main reason I picked them up aside from the awesome price was that I like this a lot better than the kind of cream and brown and beige look that the uh, originals had. Overall, black is generally a much better color for mixing and matching and will go in a lot wider range of setups. In terms of the industrial designs, the HD598s follow the design language that we've seen in a lot of the Sennheiser HD uh, lineup, especially in the 500 range. I'd say a lot of people will actually be kind of hard pressed to pick these out versus something like the HD558s, especially in black. They have this really big ovular over the ear ear cup design which kind of blend right into the headband, making it kind of seem like they're one ear muffy type piece. The size and shape of the ear cups actually make them seem like they're a lot bigger than they actually are compared to other headphones. They're pretty dang light coming in at 11.1 .1 ounces or 315 grams, which makes them a tad bit heavier than the originals, which were 10.3 ounces or 294 grams. In terms of build quality, these are pretty dang solid. They're mostly plastic and I've heard some complaints of the older version getting cracked kind of right around the headband expander, but I haven't noticed that in the four months I've been using it. The headband is covered in a nice feeling leather et material, and on top you can see it has this embossed Sennheiser logo. The ear cups are made of a nice medium firm foam that springs back pretty quickly. They're covered in a velour, which of course is going to sacrifice seal and a little bit of bass response in order to have more breathability and a better sound stage. It's pretty common amongst open back headphones. The actual enclosures themselves are again mostly plastic, but on the back, you can see they've got this glossy black metal mesh with a sign has their S branding below it. And of course that mesh is what makes these an open back headphone. The weight and materials add up to these being an extremely comfortable pair of headphones for very long listening sessions. They've got this dual hinge system, which can both pivot left and right and kind of swing in and out. The size of the ear cups means that they should fit over most people's ears. I have heard people online complaining that the way that Sennheiser kind of places their drivers with their EAR system 
can cause some rubbing for certain people with certain size and angled ears. It hasn't been a problem for me, but your mileage may vary obviously. In terms of clamping force, I'd say that these are pretty light and absolutely perfect for me. They don't feel kind of like they're clamping my head too hard at all. I remember trying on the, I think, HD 558s or maybe it was the HD 600s and I didn't like the clamping force while I was there at uh, b &H trying them. The headband adjustment on these are plastic, but it's pretty substantial in terms of how big it gets, so people with larger heads should be able to use these pretty well. I myself wear a size seven and a half hat, if that gives you any reference. In terms of kind of everyday use and what I uh, found them good for and what I didn't find them very good for, being open back headphones, as you might expect, they're not great for being portable or on the go headphones. Um, they leak a lot of sound, so if you're on the bus or if you're in a space like an office or a common space, not gonna be good for those. They don't fold up and they don't come with any type of carrying case. You do get, I guess, a little bit of portability and versatility out of the fact that you can uh, swap out the cables, but overall, not gonna be really good for um, using on the go. They're more of an in-home or in-studio uh, type of headphone. In terms of the listening experience, I really, really enjoyed using these. Sennheiser considers them kind of reference quality headphones, meaning that they don't color the sound a lot in any way. They do tweak it to give it what they consider to be a comfortable listening experience, but try to keep it so that you can hear what the artist intended with these headphones. Now, I don't really have a golden ear whatsoever, but overall, I gotta say that these are a very well balanced pair of headphones. I did notice that they uh, benefited from a little bit of burn in, I'd say like three to five hours, but after that, I noticed that they came to life a little bit more. If I had to describe the sound quality in two words, I'd say smooth and clear. Getting into some of the specs, the drivers are 53 millimeter neodymium ferrous magnet type drivers. They also have what Sennheiser call a dual fold diaphragm design. The frequency ranges from 12 hertz to 38.5 kilohertz, and they have an impedance of 50 ohms. This means that they are drivable by most of the common type of devices most people are using these days, be it mobile devices, a laptop, or a desktop computer, but they will benefit greatly from having a nice DAC and amp combo. I noticed that these being open back and having a slightly higher impedance than something like the M50Xs that's uh, driving them at the same volume, the M50Xs sounded noticeably louder. Here you can see the frequency response graph and it compared to a couple of different headphones. Being an open back headphone, I think it's pretty understandable that these have little to no sub bass, meaning you won't really feel them kind of vibrating on your head and you won't feel the uh, kind of reverberation of the drivers very much. They do have bass. I've heard people um, describe them as bassless. The bass is there. You can make out uh, different types of bass frequencies and instruments pretty well, but they don't thump at all. You know, they're open back, so I don't know why people would expect them to have like a really, really, really strong bass response. That said, it may mean that some people won't like these for listening to certain genres of music like EDM and hip hop. The mids are nice and prominent. I wouldn't really consider these to be scoops or V-shaped at all. I was able to make out a lot in the mids, which is nice. And the highs are pretty nice and pleasant, clear and crisp there. I really like listening to female vocals. They sounded absolutely great. I did want to touch on something that a lot of people are going to probably chime in on in the comments below, and that is the Sennheiser veil that's kind of an attenuation and a drop off of the highs and the trouble you search around you'll see a lot of people referring to this saying that Sennheisers tend to lack energy and the treble as if a cloth has been laid over the sound source for those frequencies I'm not particularly sensitive to the Sennheiser veil I've tried out a lot of Sennheisers including those $55,000 headphones and uh, a couple other headphones like the HD 800s and HD 800 S's. Some people say that, you know, they lack a bit of sparkle or uh, clarity in the high ends. I tend to get really, really fatigued by overly bright headphones. So if there is anything like a Sennheiser Veil, I, I don't mind. Particularly when listening to genres like jazz, classical, and rock, things with a lot of cymbal work, I really, really enjoyed these. So I did try these out for gaming and I had kind of mixed feelings about it. The soundstage is absolutely great as you would expect with the open back headphone, meaning that localization of a lot of the sounds like footsteps and bullet whizzes and people moving around and wrestling was very, very good. I was able to pick out forward and back a little bit and a little bit of left and right kind of naturally without any type of virtualization. 
but compared to mini gaming headsets, these will seem absolutely baseless, which may take away from some of the immersion from things like explosions and other common sounds. If you don't mind that, I'd say that these could work out pretty good as a gaming headset if you have a standalone like condenser mic, or maybe you can pick up a mod mic, slap that on there when you need it, and you've got a decent gaming headset for under $200. So I did go ahead and watch and listen to a few movies using these and overall I like them a lot for that. Movies that are very well mastered and have very very nice soundtracks were a pleasure to listen to. The soundstage really really helped benefit that and just their overall clarity meant that you could hear the music, hear people talking, and pick up on a lot of the ambient noises in the movies which were great. For things like action movies where you kind of want to be able to feel that bass and that rumbling occasionally was a little bit underwhelmed with that, but overall I really like using these for movies as well. So a little bit of a disclaimer, sound is so subjective that I always recommend that you try out a pair of headphones, particularly a fairly expensive pair, before you buy them. Try to go to somewhere like B&H or Guitar Center where you can try them on, uh, plug them into your own source, your own familiar songs, uh, listen to those and you know then you can make a better buying decision. Uh, I enjoy these a lot, they've kind of taking the role as my downstairs living room headphones that I use for listening to music, watching movies and playing games. It's really nice to be able to kind of chill out on the couch and blast some music while I'm doing work late at night. I'm a bit of a night owl and not have my um, neighbors, you know, kind of shouting at me or whatever. But that's the role they've taken for me. I'd say that they fit in really well into a YouTuber setup. Somebody who has to do a lot of audio work and editing definitely benefit from these. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of the Sennheiser HD 598 SEs in the comments below. Do you like this color scheme better or do you like the original with the uh, kind of cream and beige and brown look? Uh, what other headphones do you guys want to see me review on the channel? I'm kind of really, really getting into this whole audio scene thing. It's a little addicting, but I do like trying out a lot of different types of headphones. Um, open back, closed back. I kind of want to get into listening to some um, in-ear monitors, IEMs try to get a better feel for um, what's good for those. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. I've got links to my social media accounts in the description below. Um, go check those out. I've got also got my Amazon affiliate link. You guys can use that and it helps out the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.